सो टुडे फ्रेंड्स वी विल डिस्कस थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपेनिक परपुरा सो व्हाट इज थ्रोम्बोसाइटोपेनिक परपुरा इट इज एन ऑटोम्यून डिजीज सो फर्स्ट इट इज एन ऑटो एम्यून डिजीज इन विच द ऑटो एंटीबॉडीज आर फॉर्मड अगेंस्ट अवर प्लेटलेट्स सो इट इज एन ऑटो एम्यून डिजीज सो इट इज एन ऑटो एम्यून डिजीज एंड इट इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स वन इज प्राइमरी primary means when you cannot find any cause for the destruction of the platelets for the thrombocytopenia you does not find any cause you say it is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or itp or when you find some cause for example hepatitis c infection hiv infection or sometimes sle and lymphoma or sometimes cll is there you say it is secondary thrombocytopenic purpura when you don't find the cause it is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura also you must be you should be knowing that idiopathic is further of two types idiopathic that is itp it is having acute as well as chronic course chronic itp and acute itp acute itp you see in the childrens you see in the childrens okay so the acute is the it is the most common cause of acute onset which is seen in otherwise a normal child and there is always a history of viral illness one month before the onset of the thrombocytopenia that is the ptk and purpura and the features of thrombocytopenia develops one month after a history of viral illness for example fever sore throat and the estimated incidence is 1 in 20000 children okay so thrombocytopenic purpura is an autoimmune disease in which the antibodies are formed against the platelets it is of two types that is primary when no cause is formed and secondary when it is associated with other infection like hepatitis c hiv sle lymphomas like cll and you should also be knowing that itp that is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura is of two types that is acute as well as chronic okay so how will you diagnose idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura it is a diagnosis of exclusion this is very important what do you mean by diagnosis of exclusion that is when you cannot find out any other cause for isolated thrombocytopenic purpura then you will say that it is a case of idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura okay then now we will see i told you already that there is a history of exposure to common viral illness that is one month before the symptoms of thrombocytopenia and the peak age group which is affected in the children is 1 to 4 year and it is usually seen in the late winter season and spring season as in the late winter and spring season there is a peak incidence of the respiratory illnesses okay then pathophysiology so what happens in itp suppose this is your platelet and you know on the platelets there is some there is receptors called glycoprotein 2 b3a against these receptors the auto antibodies are formed and when these auto antibody coats the platelet receptors suppose these are the receptors and these receptors are being coated by our platelet these receptors sorry these receptors has been coated by the auto antibody that is glycoprotein 2 b3a so if the patient is having respiratory illness it is believed that in their body some antibodies are formed against the viruses and these viruses which are which these and these antibodies which are formed against the viruses they cross react with our platelets glycoprotein 2 b3a and when these coated platelets goes to the spleen in the spleen there are splenic macrophages macrophages they recognize their fc portion and they engulf it they engulf it these coated platelets are being engulfed by our macrophages and they start destroying them so in this way these platelets get destroyed within the splenic macrophages and there is development of thrombocytopenia okay so this is the pathophysiology 
so this is normal blood film in which you can find there are lots of platelets are there this 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 but here you can find only one or two platelets you, sh you should also be knowing in the peripheral blood smear of ITP patient you find the platelets are either normal in size or maybe in large in size okay this is important one more condition in which you find large platelets is your Bernard Sollier disease Bernard Sollier disease you find large platelets in ITP you can find large platelets as well as in Bernard Sollier you find large platelets okay so this is important also in ITP the RBC morph RBCs are normal as well as WBCs are normal there is no defect in your WBC and RBCs okay this is important but however if you are finding fragmented RBC and also thrombocytopenia you should rule out hemolytic uremic syndrome and thrombocytopenic purpura thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura these two conditions you should rule out if you are getting the fragmented RBCs in the film in in association with thrombocytopenia however if the RBC and WBC are normal and there is isolated thrombocytopenia then it is a case of idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura now so I already told you there is a history of viruses and the viruses which are implicated in the ITP is usually the Epstein-Barr virus okay also some patient has a history of infection with H. pylori are measles, mumps, rubella and some vaccinations after these uh, these viruses okay then the clinical manifestations you will see there is a sudden onset of generalized patike and purpura so what are patike patike are bleeding spots which are usually 1 to 2 mm in diameter while purpura are 0.3 to one centimeter in diameter and there is one more condition that is ecchymosis which is more than one centimeter okay so this particular purpura which is found in the ITP it is non palpable you cannot palpate these purpuras non palpable purpura you find in ITP okay By, while in HUS hemolytic uremic syndrome you find the palpable purpura palpable purpura okay so in this patient you find the patique and purpura sometimes bleeding can occur from the gums when the bleeding occurs from the gums that indicates there is some intrinsic bleeding is going on life threatening bleeding inside the body is going on this is important also bleeding can occur from the mucous membrane and sometimes bleeding can occur from the nose that can lead to the epistaxis and in very severe cases bleeding can occur from the GIT and even in the brain that can be life threatening bleeding occurs when the platelet count goes below 10,000 and you need to transfer this patient with platelets okay also these are the various patique you are seeing patique which is 1 to 2 mm in diameter patique patique this is purpura more than if it is more than 1 centimeter that is ecchymosis between 0.3 to 1 centimeter it is purpura it is purpura this is 1 to 2 millimeter that is your patique this is bleeding gums these are bleeding gums that indicates some life threatening hemorrhage is going on inside the body bleeding gums okay so there are some differences between the acute idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura and chronic acute form is usually seen in the children in the age group of 2 to 4 years by the adult which is seen in 20 to 40 years in some books it is written that it is having bimodal peak that is it is seen in less than 40 uh, in a female more in female than male then after the age of 60 it has equal incidence in both male and female also the chronic form is usually seen in the women of reproductive age group women of reproductive age group this is important so chronic form is seen in the adults and acute form is the children seen in the children and acute form usually goes 
platelet count usually goes less than 20,000 while in the chronic ITP the platelet count is between 30 to 80,000. Acute form has an abrupt onset, the chronic form has a gradual onset. Acute form always have a history of common viral illness one month before while there is no such an antidecent infection is seen in chronic ITP. Acute ITP which occurs in children in 93% of the cases it has spontaneous resolution while this form that is chronic form has an ups and downs the disease comes and goes this fluctuation while this having the acute onset and then it resolves of its own for the acute form you can give the steroids anti d and immunoglobulin while in chronic form you have to do the splenectomy as well as you will give the corticosteroids okay so these are the various differences then how will you manage for for mild for mild cases and mild to moderate cases symptoms of itp you need no therapy only counseling is enough okay then the treatment you give then you can give also the intravenous immunoglobulin so when you are giving immunoglobulin immunoglobulin will goes to the macrophages and macrophages become busy in with these immunoglobulin and then they are unable to destroy the platelet which are coated by the antibodies okay so the dose of immunoglobulin which you are giving for ITP is 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per day that is 60 gram you can give for 1 to 2 days and this causes a rapid rise in the platelet count in about 94% of the patients within 2 days so immunoglobulin response occurs within 2 days it acts by down regulating the FC mediated phagocytosis okay then you can also give the anti d anti d you have to give one if the patient is rh positive suppose these are the rbc's and these are the rbc's rh positive antigen and when you give the anti d it reacts with with these this is anti d this is anti d antibody when you give anti d to the rh positive patient these are the RBC which are with RH positive antigen they react with them and they when these antibody coated RBCs goes to the platelets there is destruction of these RBCs platelet destroy these RBCs uh, microphage destroy these RBCs and platelets escape because the macrophage become busy in digesting these RBCs and they are unable to uh, digest these platelets so the platelets escape these are the your platelets so there is escape of platelets from the destruction so anti d we given in a dose of 50 to 75 microgram per kg and that causes the rise in platelet count within two to three days okay so this is the role of anti d then you can also give the prednisolone that is corticosteroid therapy you give in a dose of 1 to 2 milligram per kg for one day and it is continued for 2 to 3 weeks or until your platelet counts become more than 20,000 when you are giving prednisolone or corticosteroid you have to give the calcium or vitamin D supplementation because it can cause osteoporosis also you should monitor the blood sugar and uh, it can also cause growth failure you have to monitor then then if there is a risk of intracranial hemorrhage or then you have to give multiple modality treatment for example you have to transfuse the patient with platelet count platelet also you have to give the immunoglobulin corticosteroids and simultaneous consultation with neurosurgery is also required so usually you don't transfuse the platelet because the antibodies are found against the platelet and that platelet which you are transfusing that can also be destroyed however you can give it if there is a life threatening bleeding is going on usually it is contractually indicated however you can give if there is life threatening bleeding is there then splenectomy you do it in a cases of 
chronic ITP when the symptoms are not easily controlled with other medications or if there is an intracranial hemorrhage or sometimes the when you cannot conduct the platelet count very rapidly you need to trans uh, you do the splenectomy so if you are going to do the splenectomy you have to immunize the patient one month before with pneumococcal vaccination against the pneumococcal nazirium meningitis and h influenza that is you have to vaccinate the individual with against the encapsulated organism encapsulated organisms you have to vaccinate the individuals okay so this is the role of splenectomy that's it thank you i hope you like it